Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Teslin Figaro. Good morning, DJ NV and Charlemagne the God and the Breakfast Club family. Good morning. Peace, Tess. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Some front page news. Let's talk Donald Trump. I guess we got some exclusive audio. Yes, we do. A 2021 audio recording of former President Donald Trump discussing what he called a highly confidential document about Iran. He acknowledged that he could not declassify the document because he was out of office, appears to contradict his recent assertion that the material he was referring to was simply news clippings. Now, portions of the transcript of the two minute recording of Trump were cited by federal prosecutors in the indictment of Trump on charges that he put national security secrets at risk by mishandling classified documents after leaving office and then obstructing the government's effort to retrieve them. Let's take a listen to the audio and talk about it on the other side. Yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. secret. <laughs> this is secret information. Yeah. But look, look at this. You attack. And Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. <laughs> she'd send it, no, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner, yeah, yeah. the pervert. Um, by the way, isn't that incredible? Yeah. I was just saying because we were talking about it, <laughs> and you know, he said he wanted to attack Iran and what? Yeah, he said you the did. Pretty, well, this was done by the military, given to me. I think we can probably. Right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to. Declassified. Out a, a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified. Yeah. Now I can't. Well, they, they caught him in 4K. <laughs> his, his, his fingerprints all over that one. His DNA all over that one. But, you know, my whole thing now is, you know, are, are they going to prosecute him for that, though? Well, the, this was already in the indoc uh, in the indictment that they already have the 31 uh, individual uh, uh, national security documents that they already you know are charging. Oh, I, I guess so I mean, one, is that going to lead to him getting jail time when you got that oh, kind of okay. evidence right there? You know what I mean? Well, that's some pretty that's some pretty strong evidence. And, you know? and who taped? So. And who taped it? Well, I don't know if it was just something that it was in the it was in the indictment. So I don't know. But it was other staffers in the room. They're also talking about those staffers could possibly be uh, subpoenaed as well, you know, to see, you know, if they want to testify to what they heard and what they saw. Mm. Um, but it's just something that CNN uh, obtained from the indictment. So Trump knows that this is a part of his case. Uh, but, you know, he is responding, saying that I did nothing wrong. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, he said that again. uh he is correct. So he that's about. He should have said it was AI. That's what Donald Trump should have said. He should have said that was not me. That was a fake AI phone conversation. Too many people around for that. And who was the yep. people? In the, I wonder who the person was like. Um, Hillary. Hillary used to print these all the time. Like damn. Staffers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus. It was staffers in the room that was going right along with it. So mm -hmm. we're gonna see if they're gonna take that charge too. That's what's gonna be interesting when they start bringing them up to see if you if you're willing to get the time. You're gonna do the time, hold it down, or go ahead and throw them under the bus. What do you think? I really don't know. I mean, I, don't I, know. I, I never thought that they would even, you know, choose to prosecute a, a, a former president. Um, but I mean, it seems like they got overwhelming evidence to, you know, throw him in jail. And you know, the feds don't play when the feds come for you. You know, what's their, what's their conviction rate? Like ninety something percent? It's pretty yeah. high. Yeah, very high. Pretty. We shall see. We shall see. Well, meanwhile, despite everything going on, uh, the Faith and Freedom Conference booed Chris Christie for criticizing Trump. So his folks are still, you know, in support of him. Let's take a listen to that and talk about that. I'm running because he's let us down. He has let us down because he's unwilling. He's unwilling to take responsibility for any of the mistakes that were made, any, uh, any of the faults that he has, and any of the things that he's done. And that is not leadership, everybody. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want. What, what do you think it is? They're just fans of Trump, or they don't respect the fact that uh, Chris Christie was a Trump guy, and now he, you know, has, has turned has little, turned coat. Probably a little bit of both, but I think it's more just Trump. I mean, Trump, again, he's raised uh, more money than he ever has since mm -hmm. he's had this indictment. Mm -hmm. He said yesterday that... Uh, you know, it again, he's still pushing that pushing the, the narrative that he's being, you know, basically persecuted for everyone else. Uh, he just really has a hold, you know, on his base. He did go on. Chris Christie did go on and say that his faith, uh, that our faith teaches us, because, again, he was talking to faith leaders, that people should take responsibility uh, and stand up for what is right. And some people clap. He, he got the slow clap. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
But overall, you know, he was booed. But I just think, I mean, people are just locked in with Trump. He's just done a hell of a job of pushing the narrative that he is the one, he is the second yeah. coming, you know, of whatever it is. And that's just that. I mean, people scary. are having a hard time going away. Yeah, it really it's is. It's scary because people are not locked in with Joe Biden like that. They're not locked in with Joe Biden mm. like that. And Chris Christie is not locked into a gym like that. Trump, Trump said that up. Chris Christie. <laughs> Trump said that Chris Christie don't need to be running nothing but his body on a treadmill. You are okay? stupid. But That's can Trump, Trump really said. say that? Is he in position to say that? Should, should he I mean, also I mean, be joining Chris you're, Christie you're, on the you're, treadmill? You're, you're right. Trump is Trump is a, a round mound to rebound himself. But you know, when the other person is bigger, you can still make uh, fat jokes. That's All the right. Rule. Well, that That's is the rule. Front page That's the rule. news. Okay. Taz, we'll see you in a little bit. Absolutely. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, call us up right now. Phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club on BET. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Teslin Figaro is back. Tez, what up? Good morning. Good morning, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God, and good morning yes, to the Breakfast Club listeners. One thing about Breakfast Club listeners, they will investigate. That's right. <laughs> well, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about this Georgia Police Department uh, under investigation for using a photo of a black man for target practice. Now, I, I go to the range a lot, and I've never seen a, a <laughs> you know a, a colored anything like it was like light, dark, or Asian or Spanish. It's usually black and white, and if it is color, it's just usually targets. Right, just the frame of it, right? Just the so frame speaking of, it. of right, speaking of investigations, uh, like we said, the Georgia Police Department is under investigation after using an image of a black man as a target during a firearm safety class for civilians and posting the photos of it on social media. Now, the, the police department in Villa Rica, that's about 33 miles west of Atlanta, held the event on Saturday, and again, they put the the, the photos on Facebook of the participants aiming their guns at the targets featuring a life-size photo of a black man. Now the man on the targets is pointing a gun and wearing a beanie. So black man with a beanie uh, using it for target practice. Now they have taken down those pages on Facebook. This isn't new though. I've seen, I've seen them do this like quite a few times. It feels like every few years a story like this uh, comes out mm -hmm. where police are using a black person's image you know, mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to either do for target practice. But ha has, the, uh, has the police department responded? Yeah, they said uh, it was never their intention to be insensitive or offensive to anyone. Uh, they said they do have targets of all races, but the officer who posted the photos made a mistake and only uh, the black targets were used. They said it was an innocent mistake, but it was a mistake. He said he's very transparent, but at no time will he accept people telling him that he is a racist and that their department is racist because they made a mistake. And I just looked into the demographics uh, of uh, that town. And again, it is 44% white and 40% black. And again, right outside of Atlanta. So it may not be the wisest thing uh, to post that on social media uh, you know, because it, it certainly obviously sends some mixed messages. Yeah, like yeah, I, I said, when I when I go to the range, it's usually they'll have a blue person or, you know, they'll have a, a yellow person or a rainbow colored person, depending on where the targets are. You know, like yellow might be the heart, red might be the head, but I've never seen a, a person, like a black person. You know, I, it's just weird that they have that. I wouldn't even right. use people at all. I use like uh, uh, superhero images or villains. Like I'd use like Magneto or the Joker or somebody like that. Because I feel like, you know, regardless of what color the person is that you put on that target, it'll psychologically program you to make you think that people who look like that are a threat. Right. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, sometimes they use, like, hockey hockey players, like, people are dressed up on all in the hockey thing. I wouldn't like do that. that either. There's hockey players walking around in these streets, too. Somebody pull, pull exactly. out the hockey Exactly. What about... Yeah, the, the the Joker community, people that support the Joker community may find that offensive too. So just just do an outline of a of, right. a, of a of a shape. That's what mine the is. Joker just an outline. Community. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, the comic book community might say that. You know, again, we're living in an age where everybody's offended about everything. So you're not just lying. do an out. Yeah, just do an outline of of a of a body and and just keep it keep it moving. That's okay, the safest what way. What if you what if you do? Because uh, remember, he said use rainbow. Then they'll be talking about we well, use a rainbow. Right. That, that's right. So. <laughs> Jesus. What if you do alien villains? What if you do Thanos? You know what I mean? Like, what if you do actual villains that 
don't even exist. They're no, not but even what human. about the people that what about the people that support, you know, DC and, and Marvel and, and all of that and saying you're programming children, you know, to not like people in comic books. And so, again, well, I would we say just... I would say, hey, I'm a police officer. You don't have no problem when your favorite superhero shoots his lasers <laughs> at these people. So don't be mad at us when we use them for talking. Practice. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, let's talk about heavy drinkers. What, what are we talking about with heavy drinkers now? Yeah, this is interesting. Let me ask you before I get into this. Have you guys ever said you can hold your own liquor, that you hold your liquor better than most people? Charlemagne, <laughs> Envy? No. No, yes. you never said you. So I've you're not. You can't that. hold your liquor. I'm. I'm not a, a, a real like. I'm not gonna go over overboard. Well, that's that's what Have I say. Seen? That's what I say. When I see somebody get like a uh, super super drunk, like you know, how people get like pissy drunk and they get angry and yeah, will fight yeah. everybody or they be falling all over the place. I'd be like, I've never gotten like that. I mean, the first time I ever had a drink when I was a kid, yes, but not in my adult life. Yeah, I've nah. never been like that. Mm -mm. So when you use the frame, hold my liquor, I hold it better, you're saying you say, I don't get to the point where I'm just intoxicated and going crazy. Yes. Okay. Correct. Well, some people, when they say hold the liquor, like what I would say, I'm saying that I don't, it, it doesn't affect me the same way as others. But uh, in this study, I found out that that just has to do with how many drinks you actually drink. Because if you are binging and drinking a lot, you do not hold your liquor. So this uh, study said that instead people with alcohol use disorder, what is called alcoholism, uh, was uh, the people were significantly impaired and their motor test skills were affected based upon how much they drink and the how many drinks they drink in a short amount of time. So this study said, but there is some degree of support for people to have an increased amount of tolerance so there is some truth to you being able to hold your liquor better than others but overall this study is saying that the bottom line is if you drink a lot you do not hold it any better than anybody else so wanted to let people know where you fall on the scale light drinkers is up to six drinks a week but do not be in six is a, a lot that's like maybe one drink you know a day drink a day uh, Mm -hmm. I think that's about right moderate, moderate drinkers they didn't even include them in a study I guess they don't count but they said the second group in the study were heavy social drinkers. I know a lot of people say even on apps and dating apps, they'll say, are you a social drinker? Well, if you're saying you're a social drinker, that means you drink 10 drinks a week at minimum and binge on alcohol one to five times a month. I thought that was a lot. I Jesus. thought a social drinker meant, That's yeah, I thought a, a social drinker kind of meant, you know, when I go out, I'll have a drink, but not according to this study. If you are a social drinker, you drink 10 drinks a week and you binge at least one to five times a month. The third group, uh, which is considered uh, basically alcoholism, alcohol use disorder, that means you drink 28 or more drinks per week. Jesus. For men and 21 for women, and you binge at least one third or more days per month. I know a lot of alcoholics, then. I've known a lot of alcoholics <laughs> for a long time. That much, four drinks a day average? That's about average if it's saying 28 a week Jesus. for men, 21 a day. I was really shocked on this social drinking thing because if you you guys are not on date naps or look at any of that type of stuff, but they'll have you select are you a drink, you know, socially? And socially kind of means you binge. And yeah. I would never have thought that social was binging. I thought that was just, hey, if I go out, I'll have a drink. So I'll tell you one thing. I'm none of those <laughs> things now. Okay. Like I, I, I might I might not have even a, a light drinker. I might have a drink or two a month because I don't have I don't speaking of tolerance, I don't have a tolerance for alcohol anymore. If I do like let's just say two two shots of tequila, right? Like two two glasses of tequila, they pour a shot in and that's your glass. Even if I if I do a double shot, I'm done. I don't need yeah, no more I don't alcohol. Do shots at all. I'm I like edibles. You know what I'm saying? I pop me a 10 milligram edible and a, 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 a shot of tequila. I'm I'm good, good. I'm out. Mm -mm. All right. Yeah, well, but that was interesting. Well, that is your front page news. Thank you, Tez. Yeah, absolutely. Charlamagne. And, and make sure you subscribe to this great shot no chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network and follow Tez at Tez and Figu Te Te at Tez and Figaro on all social media platforms. All right. Now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Yesterday, 7,000 flights were canceled. 9,000 delayed. Do you need to vent? I know a lot of you are still at the airport right now. We see mm. you calling in. You're listening on the app. We appreciate you. I don't know how I got in. Uh, yesterday, six flights were canceled. Uh, my assistant called, and they just, I swear, they just took a flight from the back. It was it was empty. We were able to get on that flight. That flight sold out within three minutes. So I was able to get back yesterday. Our staff is not here. So we're asking, do you need to vent? Were you one of those people that missed your flight or your flight was delayed? Let's talk about how bad it was yesterday flying. 800-585-1051. Call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club on BET. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.